If you've ever ventured into the world of SEO, you'll know one thing. It takes a long time. It's a slow game of patience. Especially if you're just starting with a new website, you can get stuck in what's called the Google Sandbox, and it can be three months before you ever get any traffic at all, and then another six or 12 months of slowly building up your website and painfully slowly building up traffic just to get anywhere near your competitors or where your goals are. You know, this stuff can take years, realistically. But there are ways you can jump ahead of all of this and either hit the ground running with your new website or juice up the power of the website you're already operating. And a lot of people will steer clear of this method because maybe it feels a bit spammy or like they're just not sure or they're worried they're going to get penalized by Google. But I can promise you the top SEOs, they're all using this strategy to get ahead of the game and reap the rewards and earn bigger and better from Google's algorithm. And that secret that they're using is expired domains. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video today, how you can harness the power of expired domains to build a website that prints cash for you or that can juice up and power up your brand or your business's website or just to go out there and have fun and enjoy the exploits of the uh, the world wide web so we're going to go through firstly what are expired domains how you can use them and where you can find them and how to get started sort of testing this stuff out for yourself so let's jump right into things here what i've got for you first up is this is a list of expired domains. You can see on the left here, it's just a list of website URLs. Now, these are basically all old websites that people used to own. Generally, they are previous businesses that have gone into administration, have closed, and the administrators or the business owners have just failed to upkeep their subscription for their domain. They have no reason to pay for it anymore because the business doesn't exist and it seems like an unnecessary cost and they don't even realize that it might have some value, right? Or they're just domains that people have let drop that they don't even realize sometimes. And what's cool is we can go and buy all these old domains that people aren't using anymore and harness the power that they've been built up with over years. For example, let's say you've owned and run a business for 10 years. Now, there's two important points to ranking on Google. One is quality relevant content. Okay, great. The other is quality relevant backlinks, links and mentions from other websites to your website. Now, a good business is naturally going to build up those links over the matter of time. Maybe you do some events and you get listed. Maybe you're mentioned in the Chamber of Commerce. Maybe you do some great press press releases. Maybe something newsworthy happens or you're an industry expert and you get featured in big news. You're just naturally going to acquire this sort of entity and presence around the web with other people mentioning your brand and linking to your website. Now, let's say that business closes and you forget about the domain. You don't repay the, the subscription to keep it in your possession and it, it becomes expired. When a domain expires like that, other people can come in and buy that, which is what we're talking about today. So realistically, looking through expired domains, I always think it's almost looking through a list of people's failed hopes and dreams because you can see some small businesses that have been in there um, and every project that everyone's ever tried to run on the web and failed is kind of in this big list of expired domains which people pick up. So you can go and buy an expired domain from one of these lists. Then what do you do with it? Well, two things really. You can rebuild a website that's very similar and talks about the same stuff with the goal to rank on Google and then maybe you want to sell advertising or affiliate commissions and use it as sort of a passive income or you can take that domain rebuild it rebuild the website let it rank on Google and then redirect it to your other website to sort of harness those backlinks and siphon off that backlink juice power onto your website or just use it to provide backlinks from one website to another. And you might be thinking, well, that seems a little spammy. Surely Google's going to penalize me for that. Obviously, if you do it badly, yes. But when you think about it, there's many reasons that a business might redirect one URL, one old domain to a new one. For example, acquisitions. Businesses are bought and sold all the time. Mergers happen. And when that occurs, often websites are merged. The smaller or the acquired business gets merged into the bigger business or the acquirer. And that domain is literally redirected into that old website, into that new from the old one to the new one. Boom, completely natural thing to happen. That business that has acquired the smaller business gets all that SEO power and it's a natural, legitimate thing to happen, right? The other reason might be a rebrand. For example, I've got one up here actually that's 
Tesla used to be teslamotors.com, you can see here, and they rebranded their website to tesla.com. Now, rather than just getting rid of that old domain teslamotors.com, you can see here, they simply redirected it to their new domain so that they could take advantage of, firstly, all that SEO power they built up on teslamotors.com and so that users didn't get confused um, and all the web, new website traffic, traffic still funneled into the rebranded domain. So you can actually click on this blog post, for example, and see on the Amazon AWS here, which is a nice high-powered authoritative domain, you can see the link to teslamotors.com here. You click that and it takes you to tesla.com. It's a perfectly legitimate reason why someone would redirect one domain to another and it makes sense. It's the same business. It's in the same industry. It's talking about the same stuff. So of course that's going to carry weight and be legitimate in Google's eyes. So there's plenty of reasons why you can legitimately use an expired domain and it's hard for Google to otherwise distinguish whether it's a legitimate use or not. As long as you're maintaining that, that relevance to the content that's been on there before and the industry. If that's of interest to you, how do you go and buy, find and buy an expired domain? Well, there's lots of places. There's the first place most people usually land on is this place called expireddomains.net. And it's just a huge long list of, you know, it's a marketplace of thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of domains available to buy. You can see there's the good, the bad, the ugly. There's all sorts of random stuff on here. But anyone can create an account here and you can start searching for domains you might want, for example, in a particular industry. Let's say I've got, I've tried email here. So let's say you uh, email marketing or you want to talk about email marketing or something in that sphere. You can start looking at domains that have the keyword email in them um, and start filtering them down to something you might like the look of. Now, in expired domains, there's all sorts of settings. You can just go by total amount of external backlinks, which is a sign of there might be something good in there. There might be some powerful backlinks that we can harvest. Or there's even, I quite like this little setting here, there's Wikipedia backlinks, which, you know, a lot of wikipedia.org links often points to a website that's built up a lot of trust in its industry because it's used as a reference on Wikipedia for its website. It's a good trust signal. So you can go through and, and you can have a look at these. There's other places. There's a site called ODIS, O-D-Y-S. And this is, again, it's a marketplace, but it tends to be of higher quality. There's a bit more of a vetting process for the domains on here. So you're going to find they might be more expensive or they're only more expensive, but you might find there's more quality here. So you can go through and search on this. There's also SEO.domains. Again, this is a, a nice long list. This has everything from the good to bad, the ugly. So... There's really huge amounts of choice out there when it comes to expired domains. Now, this is really important because you don't want to waste money on a crappy, spammy domain that isn't going to do anything that's actually going to harm you in the long run. We're only looking for high quality, which means once you start looking, you need to then understand how you're going to find a good or a bad domain. And this comes with a little bit of experience, a little bit of understanding what you're looking for and the tools you can use. So we've been talking about email and marketing and stuff like that. Um, and I've been searching on SEO.domains, which again has sort of everything you can think of. And I quite like the look of Ecom Academy. It's got some data. It's a DA, so it's fairly low powered, but it's probably going to be have a price that reflect that. Obviously, the more high power and the higher quality of a backlink profile of a domain, the more expensive it's going to be. So we can take a domain like that and we can plug it into a tool like Href or SEMrush and start looking at their backlink analytics. And very quickly, you can start to see the sort of profile that's been built up. Built with .com, okay, that's an okay domain. It's probably in their blog or their directory area or something like that. So that's a little, a little bit of link power, but it's nothing crazy, crazy good that, that we'd like to see. There's all sorts of things you can go in and have a look at here. But to be honest, I'm looking at this. I'm not really seeing loads and loads of amazing link power that are too good to be true sort of thing. It's it's a lot of nothing. So I, I probably wouldn't wouldn't pay too much attention to this just on that, that quick check here. I'm not seeing any, any great domain power that I want to, to harvest. Um, we could have a look at this Otis one, attentionalways.com. I think we're talking, again, looking at email marketing and marketing style blogs or websites that we're looking for. Again, using one of these SEO tools to start really trying to find out, does it have a useful 
backlink structure that we can take advantage of. Now, this looks a bit more promising overall. Bing.com, that's direct from the search engines there. Stack Exchange, great authority scores here. Devane Tart, GoDaddy, USA Magazine, Substack. These are okay. These aren't too bad. Crunchbase is always a good one. That's a good uh, trust signal that it's a real legitimate business. But a lot of these might actually be... Um, Okay, we've got USA Magazine, that's that's a fairly good link. Substack.com, uh, yeah, okay, these are, these are fine without being amazing because a lot of them are from sort of forums and directories and things like that. Although we've got one from Backlinko here, which is a really, really strong marketing SEO blog. If you haven't heard of it, it's worth checking out and going and reading that. So we can go through and see if, you know, where is that link and is it of any power to us? I think from looking at Again, looking at the anchor text and URL, it's got a UGC tag, so it's probably actually in the comments. So again, I'm kind of looking at this, I'm like, yeah, it's fine, but a lot of the links aren't in content, high powered links, they're sort of wrangled in some way or another, but you know, it might be okay if it fits it fits the bill. Let's say, you know, cause I've, I've similar strategies, built expired domains, a lot of travel stuff, and I've been able to pick up great domains for one or 2000 dollars that are links from all the big publishers from industry you know location niche sites and things like that and when you see that you'll know you'll see it because it'll have um it'll have those big big news publishers and industry specific sites that you're like yeah that's exactly that's a high quality site let's go and have a look at that. let's go back to odis and see if we can find an example of a really nice high quality stay hawaii let's see what stay hawaii as travel often has great stuff in it because so if we look in here we can again start to see stayhawaii.com this could be a great domain for obviously a, a travel website in hawaii and you could sell affiliate links to hotels and tours and travel or you could build a whole business based off the back of, of a if this is a high quality domain and straight away you can see the difference in quality of some of these links here mapquest okay that's a bit more of a directory site but it's a great trust builder and it looks like it's built into their uh, links built into their blog again you could go and have a little look at that of what that link is washington post great that's exactly the sort of thing we want to be finding is these high powered news publishers that bring a lot of authority and credibility and then we've got all sorts of things in here budgettravel.com we've got a nice mix of um, of links and different powered although it's not you know top tier it's not one of those unicorn domains that you can find if you are looking at building a travel website in hawaii this might suit the bill absolutely brilliantly because it's got a nice mix of uh of backlink power going on there and a couple of really high powered things in there so that's the sort of stuff you're looking for and you're looking for any signs of anything spammy anything untoward that's gone on to them whether there's further redirects from other websites or weird link building patterns or just stuff that isn't industry relevant or isn't relevant or doesn't make sense to that previous business that looks like someone is trying to manipulate the power of a domain basically because that happens all the time as well so if it looks a bit fishy delve a bit deeper and ask yourself why would someone build that link is it just manipulating things or is there a legitimate reason that that brand that business was mentioned and linked in that way so you found your domain you're going to go with stayhawaii.com for example and you're going to build a website about hawaii either to rank that in google or to eventually redirect and harness that link juice for your already existing website what we need to do is a two-step process really we need to especially work out where those backlinks were pointing to, what pages and what URLs those were previously linking to, and try and rebuild a website that was similar with similar content pointing to those URLs that we had on that page to try and reactivate that link juice, right? So we can go to a, a website called Web Archive, and this is great because this is going to show you a historic look of what a website looked like. Right? So you can pop your URL in there and get it to start formulating previous snapshots of the website. Now that's great because we can go and then understand what the website was all about. Is it relevant to what we're doing? Look at the type of content on there and go and basically rebuild a lot of that website with the same URL structures to take advantage of that link juice basically. Okay, and it really is kind of as simple as that. If you find a good domain, you just go and rebuild the website on it. And then it's really up to you whether you use that to try and 
generate passive income from that website through affiliate deals or maybe even you build a business upon that domain because you're starting a new business brand and you want to get ahead in Google or number three which is a slightly more technical process of I want to take that SEO juice in this website and transplant it into my current website you still need to think about going and building out the website again ranking it on Google and then once you've ranked it on Google in your particular niche or industry, then you can look at redirecting, 301 redirect that business to your current business, that new website to your current website, as if it is been a merger or an acquisition is what you're trying to make it look like, basically. And the likelihood is if you do it right, and there's some great resources on the actual how to finish off that process and do it, which I can pop some links in the description below of the options you can use for that redirect. And I'll go and make an, another video on that in due course. But if you do it right, you can get massive, massive bonus 